Nice. His arguments are really simple to pull apart. I mean, that was the same way with the gaming is less masculine or whatever, where he just like he would just throw up an image of a woman with blue hair or seer from Apex Legends and be like, games are gay now. And it's like, OK, I guess <laughs> like, it's not really an argument. It's not really anything like it's just sort of like saying things um <laughs> and it doesn't mean anything everything's so gay now yeah it's so it's just stupid um but right now we're watching a 20 minute video here this is by andy pants gaming which for some reason i've appeared on his radar he's commented on one of my videos before in the past which i think is just absolutely hilarious i'm because <laughs> it was my video about uh diesel punk where i said the title of the video was what is diesel punk and why is it better than cyberpunk which is basically it's more of like an opinion for me and he just commented on it and he said no it's not but nice try which i thought was funny because coming from the guy who's like super anti-gay and anti all of this i would think that he would hate cyberpunk you know, cyberpunk is like everything has everything in it that he probably thinks or that he claims is wrong with gaming. Like Johnny Silverhand is bisexual. He talks about wanting to fuck or fucking Kenny multiple times <laughs> along with a bunch of other things. And it's like it doesn't make any fucking sense how you like can hold these two opinions at the same time. Like it just kind of like hurts my um, he hasn't been kicked off YouTube yet. He's dropped the vague references to Jews and are explicitly calling them out by name. I mean, yeah. Hateful, like, right-wing stuff on YouTube does incredibly well, in fact. Like, it's not just, like, allowed, but it does really well, which is insane. But that's why we sit here and we make fun of it. So, for when this is clipped out, clipped out to the YouTube channel... Welcome, everybody. We're going to be watching a video by Andy Pants Gaming about where did Gears of War go wrong. This was suggested to me by the Discord, specifically Hudson. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> if you want to join the Discord, link down below. This is a video that came about came out about six months ago, so around the time that the E-Day trailer dropped. I'm assuming that's what made him uh, put out this video. But we're going to be watching this, and as somebody who really loves Gears of War and who has spent far too much time talking about it and defending it, you can probably see the Lancer back there. <laughs> as much as I have like a love-hate relationship with these games, it's kind of like... I'm still more of an expert, I would believe so. All right, B. You have a good night. Um... No one ever said bigotry is lost. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, but... That's just how it is. But anyways, we're going to get into this. I hope the settings aren't fucked up and that it actually works. But if we have to fix it, I might just have to fix it real quick. Gears of War 1 was released in 2006 as an Xbox 360 exclusive. Microsoft needed another game besides Halo to entice new fans, and they absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. The game still sits at a 94 on Metacritic and regularly makes lists of top 10 games of all time. <laughs> As far as shooters go, it's probably top five of all time. It's hard to overestimate the seismic effect the Gears of War game. So, like, top five? <laughs> Maybe, like, the Gears franchise in general, you could make an argument. But, like, if you're just talking about, like, Gears of War, the first one in 2006, no. <laughs> many games have come out many of the games here on this list have done third person shooting better Mass Effect isn't better as far as shooting goes but I mean the story is leagues ahead of Gears expect a lot of that boom sound effect oh, okay Fun. games had on the industry Gears of War quite literally created the third person cover based shooter and we can see this in the fact that any game today with cover based shooting merely copies its mechanics Last of Us Uncharted GTA kind 5 of. Mass Effect Fortnite, The Division, Tomb Does Fortnite have a cover-based <laughs> shooting system? <laughs> Isn't it just like building? You can't take cover in Fortnite, can you? I thought it was all like open standing. Raider, all these and more are children of the Gears games. But Gears wasn't just a huge success because of its shooting mechanics. The game was also brutal on a level we hadn't seen before. 
created iconic weaponry, iconic characters, and told a one-of-a-kind buddy war story starring Marcus Phoenix and Dominic Santiago. Playing the Gears trilogy through now in 2024, I also noticed just how brutal and smart the 2006 enemy AI still okay. is. Okay. How? What? <laughs> what do you mean by smart? Because <laughs> the bots will run directly into you when you're like holding a shotgun in their face. Or they'll run into a grenade when you throw it on the ground. They're not really smart. Well, it's been 18 years in enemy AI and games it's going to take gotten like worse years is something I still don't understand. Gears 1 still holds up as having some of the best moment-to-moment -moment gameplay I've seen in a game and definitely belongs in the pantheon of great games next to titles like Metal Gear Solid. Okay. So where did Gears go wrong? Well, I'm going to get into that later on. If you enjoy these videos, hit the subscribe button. For the rest of this video... It really hurts. I mean, like, this is like a very, very extenuating thing. And it's not necessarily like a super hard critique, but like it makes me weary of his, how do you say, um, not, not a real gear. Like that's like exactly how I feel. It's like a lot of the things he's saying of like the gameplay in 2024, it's like, why bring that up and not play the game because so far everything we're seeing was recorded by IGN <laughs> as you could see the watermark down there so like did you not even have the time to sit down and like play these games or when you did play them you didn't bother to like record it so we could like see what your experience with them was like or are you just like saying it you know and it like it opens the door for it to be a possibility that like you're just completely talking out of your ass and you don't like you're just saying that it's this or this or this. Which, when he gets into the new games, if he talks about anything in specifics, or if he doesn't talk about anything in specifics, it'll be really indicative of how much time he's actually spent with these games to form that opinion, you know? Yeah, I want to analyze the three big reasons I think Gears of War was so influential. Okay. Number one, the shooting felt like nothing else. Number two, the gameplay felt like nothing okay. else. And number three, the story felt like nothing else. In the second half of the video, I'm going to analyze what many fans consider to be the downfall of Gears. Where did it go wrong and how might Gears find its way back into the public's good graces? I'm going to bring up this guy Cliff Blazinski a lot. He okay. was the creator of Gears and truly seems responsible for nearly everything that made this game good. Oh, he's going to do this. The dude definitely thing. wears affliction shirts and Oakleys and drinks Monster, but we're not going to hold that against him. His career sadly died in 2017 with this commercial flop of a game called Lawbreakers, and now he makes musicals with his wife. Yikes. Anyway, let's talk about- What is that? Hold on. Hold on. Real quick. I'm not a big Cliffy B fan, but why is that a yikes? <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say <laughs> by calling that a yikes? Do you not like musicals, man? You didn't grow up at Disney? You didn't have that like heart in your soul? Is that is that such a tremendous sin? <laughs> the the one musical he's produced is Hades Town, which is like the most I don't know mature musical out there. Not mature, but you know what I mean. Like it's probably the edgiest, right? At least in tone and theme. So it's like, come on. <laughs> About the game. The shooting in Gears felt like nothing else. So I know I said this earlier, but Gears of War created the cover-based shooter as we know it today. What if we're going to get technical, it didn't, but it did have a major influential role in it. And I think for 2006, you could say it felt like nothing else. Yeah. Today, no. Today, Gears' shooting is fairly limited and kind of stale compared to other third-person shooters mean by that? At least in my opinion. Well, Gears of War finally figured out how cover-based shooting was supposed to feel, and they finally did it right, and now everyone just copies Gears. Now, was there technically a game in 2003 called Kill Switch that was actually the first cover-based shooter? Yes, Okay, but it's an unfortunate fact of life that a game must also be popular to be influential, and Kill Switch was not a popular game. Some people have pointed to Resident Evil 4, which came out a year before Gears, as pioneering the shooting style. RE4 doesn't actually let you snap to cover at all though, and therefore isn't a cover-based shooter. RE4 definitely influenced third-person shooters, but Gears of War is the father of the third-person cover-based shooter. It's also really interesting to look at games from this time period that hadn't quite figured out how third-person cover-based shooting is supposed to work. 
GTA 4, despite being an incredible game, came out a full two years after Gears and has absolutely awful cover-based shooting. I happen to be playing it right now and you can see some of it on screen. In the game, you're always snapping to the wrong person or moving awkwardly between cover. To reference an even older game, I remember playing The Getaway on PS2 back in the day and wow, the shooting is so awkward and feels so terrible in this game. So given how bad cover-based shooting felt in games up to this time, it's easy to see why Gears of War was so influential. Okay, Andrew, so what exactly was the cover-based shooting mechanic that they invented? Well, it's simple. When walking around, the camera is behind you and looks wherever you are looking. A button snaps you into cover, either behind a wall or waist-high cover. When you hold aim from this position, the camera zooms in so that all you are seeing... So, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this combination of screenshots feels to me like it's reinforcing what I was talking about earlier, where I don't think he actually played the games, and he's just, like, taking screenshots of things. Or he's not taking screenshots, more so that he's getting screenshots from the web that happen to be talking about what he's talking about, or that happen to be about what he's talking about, and then he uses it, therefore, you know? It's like the the three screenshots that he uses here. It's like here's one from Gears Ultimate. The camera is behind cover, and then we here's one from the original Gears game, and then there's a screenshot from Gears Four. You tell me you're like you're playing through these games, and he like you couldn't just like hop on to record exactly what you're talking about in ten seconds. You had to get three different snaps from three different games <laughs> to get your point across. <laughs> Uh, Aim from this he, position, yeah, the camera it. zooms in so that all you are seeing is the player character's shoulder and head and what you're pointing at. It seems so obvious and intuitive right now, but man, it took years for video games to figure out how to do this right. If you don't believe me, go back and play GTA 4 or GTA 3 or The Getaway, and you will see how incredibly awkward shooting guns in a third-person game used to be. I mean, it's also, like, engine-based. The Unreal Engine is... I mean, it's leagues above many other engines, obviously. That's why every major developer is switching to Unreal Engine 5 now as we go into more and more modern games. Like, Halo just switched to Unreal Engine. The Witcher switched to Unreal Engine. Whatever the next Cyberpunk game is, because CD Projekt Red in general switched to Unreal Engine. It's, like, such a more powerful engine for this type of stuff, especially for, like, action-adventure type stuff. Um, and Gears of War, back in the day, was pretty much just a tech demo for unreal engine so that epic games could be like hey look at what our engine can do buy our engine or license our engine to make your own games you know like it's top of the class because like it is like some of the most talented engineers in the video game space working on something and like you could say it's first but i mean like this is still at a time where like year like Games back to back in the years looked dramatically different, you know, like gaming was still evolving incredibly rapidly at the time versus now like God of War 2018, God of War Ragnarok almost looked the same. Like Ragnarok is very obviously still more advanced, more has higher fidelity and stuff. But for the most part, you can take screenshots of those two games, put them side by side, and most people wouldn't know the difference. Versus, like, the difference between, like, Gears 1 and Gears 3 is the technology is changing so much and evolving so much over such a short amount of time. I don't really know what you mean by, like, it took us this long to get here. Because the technology was still, like, rapidly changing and evolving. Like, there's just going to be a first one, I guess. He showed his gameplay of GTA 4, but not the game subject of the... Yeah, exactly. Like, you tell me you, you were sitting around and you just happened to play GTA 4 and have the footage for that, but not of Gears. <laughs> You're making a whole video about Gears of War and you didn't even, like, sit down and play it for 20 minutes? Like, I at least I do that, you know? <laughs> it's not a big critique, but, like, The gameplay on. felt like nothing else. So I should probably explain that I have zero nostalgia for the Gears games, and I never even played one all the way through until 2023. So Damn. don't think that what I'm about to say is colored by nostalgia because I literally did Hey, guess what? I also don't have rose-colored glasses for Gears. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
I like I grew up with these games, but I have like a very cynical lens on it. I actually have like the whatever the opposite of rose colored glasses are, where I'll be overly critical on gears because of my experiences with the gears community and how much people like hype up these games for no reason that I like have to like be cynical and like nihilistic and like bring it down a peg. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> so don't worry. We're working from the same frame point right now. Viewpoint, framework, something like that. Not play these games until 2023. Gears of War 1 is still one still of the tightest, IGN most difficult, funnest games you can play to this day. If you have never played a Gears game, I would recommend playing the Ultimate Edition right now, and you will see that almost nothing about this game has aged. Okay, Gears 1 to 3 hasn't aged at all. Play Gears of War 1 and play Gears 3 back to back, and you will see how much Gears 1 has aged. It's slow, it's clunky, like, you have to play the game in a snail's pace, otherwise you will break it if you move too fast. Like, what? If you play Gears 1 and Gears 3 back-to-back, -back, it ages like milk. Gears 1 is so inferior to Gears 3, in so many ways. He didn't play the games when he mentions the difficulty spikes? Oh, that'll be fun. Aged at all. So as far as gameplay goes, if I had to pick one thing that makes Gears 1 so special, it would be the difficulty. Gears 1 takes okay. about eight hours to beat on normal difficulty. Love short games, by the way. Wish more games were like this. But on hardcore difficulty, I swear the game took me at least 20 hours. I could go on and on about <laughs> <Now> he's, using, <laughs> he's using footage from MK Ice and Fire, <laughs> who's doing like a full play through the game. You don't have any footage of you playing the game on hardcore? Clinched butthole moments I had in this game. Cliffy B was a sadistic master. So, like, Gears of War is hard on the harder difficulties if you just don't pay attention. The, yeah, I know. Uh, the, the games are only really hard in the sense that, like, your character becomes made out of, like, wet paper and all the enemies are, like, more spongy. But, like, all you have to do, even on Insane, it's not that hard. You just have to go really, really slow. Like, just sit behind cover, aim, shoot, very, very slowly, and slowly work your way through the enemies. That's all it takes. There is no... Just turned 18? Oh, yeah. Gears 1 turned 18 literally yesterday, I think, or the day before. But, like... It's not that hard. It's just tedious. Like, if you're trying to play it like you would play it on normal difficulty, sure. Like, you can't do that. But, like, if you just stay in cover like the game wants you to... You're fine. It's not that hard. You know, it's just really, really slow. Changed up the enemy AI. I mean, yeah, Gears 4 and 5, 5 especially, the AI will like push up on you versus like in Gears 1 on Insane, especially the fact that there's not that many different enemy types, but it is so easy to just cheese and sit on a corner and just shoot them. Like it's not, it's not that hard. We're playing on my worst fears with well-timed enemy wave after enemy wave. When you play Gears 1, particularly the last half of the game, I really got the sense that the guys who made this game sat there and must have beta tested this game over and over again, and they truly wanted the 20th time you play a section of the game to be as fun as the first time you play a section of the game. You can practically smell the Dorito okay. and Cheeto dust coming off of this game, as I imagine Cliffy and the team at Epic spent sleepless night after sleepless night absolutely perfecting the AI in this game. And like I said, I think it's best to... What do you, so, can you, like, elaborate? Are you going to elaborate on that? Like, when you say, like, the AI is perfect, what does that mean? Because, <laughs> like, it has perfect AI. I don't even know what the fuck that means, you know? Like, <laughs> you could say Helldivers has perfect enemy AI. And it's like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the chargers that sneak up on you? Like, when you say perfect, perfect in what way? Perfect in that they flank you and go around you. Perfect in that they're organized and different enemy troops will act in different ways. Because I can guarantee you, they don't. Um, what is so perfect about the AI? It's enjoyed on hardcore difficulty. I specifically remember a pretty open area towards the end of the game where I must have died 500 times. The level starts out with locusts and Theron guards. Locusts will rush you and destroy you. Theron guards have a one-shot crossbow bolt they, they can hit you with that will immediately end your life. I always remember getting past the Locusts and Theron at this part, and then what should appear but boomers and wretches. This is a brilliant piece of gameplay because as I'm struggling to hide from the boomers, the wretches are ambushing me. 
It's I, tiny little detail. I really wish you could have just recorded the section and showed us instead of continuing to play the MK Ice and Fire video, which I get, you know, I do that too. Because, like, if I need, like, a cutscene from a video game, I'm not going to sit there and play a video game all the way through to the end just to get a cutscene at the end. I'll just, like, download somebody else's playthrough of it. But I'm not going to be, like, talking about the gameplay in a video game and then be using Dom gets himself killed every day. Yeah, Dom is worse than the Locust. But, like, if I'm talking about the gameplay of a game, like when I did my review on, like, Gears 5 or the retrospective on God of War, or when I did that video on Space Marine 2 when it came out, I just played the game. The Command Squad system? Yeah, that is also awful. <laughs> but to be fair, you don't really use it a whole lot. Um, but yeah, it is awful. It kind of flies in the face of his whole like perfect AI thing, because there's so many times where you'll like say, like Squad, regroup, and they just tell you, no, I can't do that. It's like, what do you mean you can't do that? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Details like that that make Gears 1 feel like such a tight, perfectly designed game. Another wonderfully hard thing about Gears is that A, the checkpoints are punishingly difficult, often being very far apart and making you redo entire sections of the game. They're not. And what do you mean? Uh, checkpoints. I think there's a checkpoint after like every single major encounter. <laughs> and I can't make it exactly that's exactly how the AI plays but like there's a checkpoint like after every major encounter as far as I can remember if you're moving from one room to the next there's a checkpoint because this was designed on the 360 in 2005 where it couldn't load entire levels all at once it had to have multiple checkpoints in order for you to progress through a level and I guess the no revive mechanic makes it hard that revive mechanic goes away if you play it on co-op, um, or the no revive mechanic thing goes away if you play it on co-op in the way that the game uh, wants you to play it. So that's only really a single-player difficulty thing. B, there is no revive mechanic. They added the revive mechanic in Gears 2, but in 1, you were just up shit creek. The enemy types in no, Gears 1 are really well designed friend. and play <laughs> off of each other perfectly. Locust soldiers... Be but what is this? He just Googled Gears of War enemy types. He didn't even put this together. You've got Locust in here from Gears 5, Gears 4, Gears 3, <laughs> and Gears 2. <laughs> this isn't even the Gears of War 1 enemy types. These are like really, really nitpicky uh, comments and stuff, but like, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> Uh, there's like five enemies in Gears of War 1. You have drones, grenadiers, wretches, therons, and boomers. And that's literally it. <laughs> like, there's not <laughs> there's not that many to get in there. Maybe berserkers, if you want to count, but they're more of like set-piece enemies, you know? <laughs> like cedars. Like, <laughs> come on, you couldn't even like put them Types together? Types Gears 1 are really well designed and play off of each other perfectly. Locust soldiers behave kind of like players shooting and hiding behind things. Wretches are those little hunchback things that run straight at you. Theron guards can kill you with one. I like that there's more IGN footage of somebody else playing the Gears games, and he can't just, like, load up the game and record, like, the specific things that he's talking about. Like, show us what a wretch is or a Theron. Come on. Drone, Sniper, Grenadiers, Therons, and Rom. Oh, yeah. How is it so far? It's awful. <laughs> awful. Like, as far as, like, a review goes, if the whole point of the video is to be, like, a review of, like, this is why Gears of War was so good, and then, like, here's why it's bad, it's not really a good faith review. Um... <laughs> oh, those. If you're talking about, like, multiplayer characters, yeah. One shot of a bolt. Boomers can one shot you with a grenade. Snipers can't one shot you, but will do a ton of damage. And then lastly, you have emergence holes, meaning enemies can show up and flank you from any direction. The balance well, and the interplay of all of these different types of enemies... The emergence holes aren't really random because they are all scripted. So if you know, like if you're playing the game or if you get stuck on a checkpoint and you're like getting fucked over by the emergence holes, they show up in the exact same spot every single time. You can see it when if you go back and you watch the video of a week, two weeks ago of me and Ben playing through the first act of Gears 1, when we get to like the fish in a barrel section, you can see me grabbing grenades and preparing to throw them into the e-holes before they show up because they show up at the exact same spot every single time. 
really made this game sing for me in a way that most games don't. And that's why I think Gears 1 and actually the whole Gears trilogy are classic video games. It's like a very shallow breakdown I was breakdown fighting the same types of enemies the entire game, and yet it never got old for some reason. And the only reason I can imagine why is because the AI was so good that fights always felt tense. <laughs> I don't know what he means by the AI felt so good. I'll agree with him that I think Gears does a very good job of balancing the different enemy varieties you have. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, even later games they do a good job of balancing like there's not a whole lot of enemy variety necessarily but they will know when to use a lot of them and then throw in a rare one to like mix it up and really like change the dynamic but i don't know what the ai being good has anything to do with that and taught every single fight and hardcore difficulty i made it through by the skin of my teeth and this is one of the main reasons I was so disappointed with Gears 4 and Gears 5. Okay. But I'll talk about those games later on. Another thing I haven't touched on yet in this game is the incredibly fun weaponry, like the Lancer rifle. Again, we're just taking random images off Google. <laughs> Not, <laughs> I don't think a single one of these, hold on. One of the guns on this screen appear in Gears of War 1. Because <laughs> that's Gears 1 Hammer Burst. Then we have the Gears 2 Onward Hammer Burst. Breach Shot, that's Judgment. That's Judgment, Judgment. Hold on, is this, this is a screen of weapons from Judgment. <laughs> oh, I love this. Hold on. Oh, I.e. the Chainsaw Gun and the Hammer of Dawn. What is there to say about okay. the Lancer Rifle that hasn't been said? Rushing IGN up footage. on an enemy locust and sawing them in half while blowing Oh, no, never mind. It's <laughs> I thought it was him finally doing his own footage because I didn't see the IGN watermark down there. But no, this is somebody else. Uh, Domino Vixen. <laughs> Everywhere is truly one of those gaming moments you never forget. <laughs> Playing them for the first Come time on. recently, I'm reminded how it's incredible. like it's a really, really, really innocuous criticism and one that i have because i do create stuff on here on youtube and it's like a, a point of pride for me sometimes sometimes I, I do get lazy with it too but it's like it's just such a lazy way of doing it you know like you couldn't even like look up the guns from gears of war one you just looked up gears of war weapons and took that image off google because all of those weapons don't show up until judgment you couldn't just like record you playing the game and then cut to the guns that you're talking about you just have a random screenshot from a different gears of war game like i'll get lazy with my stuff sometimes but at least it's like on point you know it's not just like straight up incorrect there wasn't a chainsaw the lancer is just assault rifle weapon i mean yeah but what the fuck is that supposed to mean <laughs> what yes without the chainsaw the lancer is just another assault rifle sure but it still has the chainsaw like that's that's a weird <laughs> that's a weird complaint. <laughs> gory the first three gears games are, and it just seemed like four and five okay. got tamer and tamer. The enemies in the original Gears trilogy, there was buckets and buckets of blood, and it was toned down quite a bit in Gears Four and Five. In a similar way, the Hammer of Dawn was such an iconic weapon in the first game that it comes up again and again in later games because fans loved it so much. There's not much to say about it really, other than that it's an incredibly cool idea to have a device that you point at enemies to line up a huge laser from the heavens that comes down to shred them. In his book, Control Freak, Cliffy B talks about how much he looks up to creators like Hideo Kojima in making the Gears games. I think Cliff doesn't give himself enough credit in this area because in my opinion, like I said earlier, Gears is at least as important in the video game pantheon as Metal Gear Solid is. Just as Metal Gear Solid inspired a generation of stealth games, Gears inspired a generation. So like, I, I get what you're saying that Gears is really important and then that could like play into Cliffy B. Stop being so lazy, get off your ass and do man stuff. <laughs> and then he makes like the least effort Gears of War video imaginable. But like, so the, the main difference between like Hideo Kojima and Gears of War is that like, at least from my understanding, I'm not a super big Hideo Ko Kojima fan. I just see all of his reposts on TikTok <laughs> and I know that he has stuff to do with Metal Gear and like uh, supposedly a lot of his like creative mind. Cliffy B is not the sole visionary behind Gears. There were a lot of important people that worked to make this thing whole. Cliffy B was like, he's kind of like the ideas guy and like the story guy, but there's a lot of stuff to the game that like 
he had no influence on or that like his influence was not like the guiding principle like gears as it is today even in gears of war 3 cliffy b <laughs> like started to despise it like a lot of the reasons why like gears of war 2 feel so like damp compared to like gears 3 is because cliffy b was like trying to hamper it so that he'd like have it in his own specific style like he's important to the games sure but like the big difference between him and um kojima from my understanding of how kojima is is that he is more of like he's at like the top of a pyramid where like kojima is the pyramid you know he actually read control freak he would point out cliffy b in books talks about leftist ideas and bash trump <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> cliffy b like cliffy b has self-described gears of war one two and three as woke there he said like if they came out today people would call them woke um or they would be referred to as such which is also weird because he called gears five woke garbage but <laughs> cliffy b just kind of says whatever to like make himself feel more popular Kojima's more ambitions. Yeah, I mean, Gears of War was pretty ambitious for the time, but by the time of, like, Gears 2 and 3, it's a lot less so, you know? ...ration of cover-based shooters. Uh, hi. Furthermore, in Cliffy's defense, I love the Metal Gear games, but if you try to go back and play Metal Gear Solid 2 now, you'll see how horribly dated the camera and controls are, and it's not so with the Gears of War games. Never has a game from 2006 means. felt so fresh and so relevant to today. Another thing here that Cliffy learned from Hideo Kojima is the art of the boss battle. There are several incredibly clever boss battles in Gears 1 in this game, including high. the Brumac and the Berserk. Going over budget? I can see that. Berserker, uh, doing the Berserk in Jima is the art of the boss battle. There are several incredibly clever boss battles in Gears 1. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. You play these games, and you get the Berserker thing wrong. <laughs> they point out specifically that it's a girl. I thought you hated women. Come on. Wouldn't you point this out? That's <laughs> one in this game, including the Brumac and the Berserker. Uh, doing the Berserker. He does the same thing that Ice did. <laughs> Berserker fight for the first time. It took me a while to figure out that you had to take out the columns to beat him. Uh, but sometimes it's just simple to mechanics fair, like that in too. boss fights that make them so satisfying. Okay, the story. By the way, the entire story of Gears 1 is Marcus is in prison. Fuck you, you don't know why. <laughs> he comes out, he helps the cog, they set off a big bomb, they shoot a big bad guy that we don't know anything about. Boom, we're done, goes home, now he's a hero. Gears of War is the best boss battles? No, they're barely boss battles. <laughs> they're like cinematic enemy fights. Um, that have like specific end states to them, but they're not really like boss battles. You know, it's like an environmental battle more so than a, what I would consider like a boss battle. I think we don't really see like boss battles in Gears. <sighs> Maybe um, the Lambert uh, Zerker in Gears 3 and Mira in Gears 3 are like more of like a boss battle type thing, but the Rom boss fight is overwhelming. I mean, it's a boss fight, but he's just a big Theron. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but like when I feel like the boss fight, I feel like it should be like a more, I don't know. There should be like something grandiose or like it should be like a really important narrative endeavor. And Gears 1 doesn't have that. The Berserkers don't have anything to do with the story. They're just a big enemy that you have to use the environment to kill. And then Rom is like, he doesn't have any story. Like, he's the guy who killed Kim. And that's it. Of course, now, in retrospect, Rom has a lot more stuff going for him. But in 2006, when you play Gears 1, or if you're someone like Andy Pants Gaming, who I guarantee has not read the comics and the books and all the extra stuff, he's probably not even played Rom Shadow. I don't even know if he's played Gears of War 1. He hasn't even shown us the ability. He has the ability to play and record games like GTA 4. But he hasn't done that for Gears of War. So I'm like not even sure that he's played these games. Or if he's just reading from the wiki. You know? Because this is like the most basic leveling understanding of the Gears of War games. It's not... Like the everything he said about Gears of War 1, you can equilaterally apply to Gears 
2, 3, Judgment 4, and 5. Like, it's not anything unique to it, really. <sighs> they didn't know where Gears was leading? Well, yeah, they even the, the, not the Coalition, Epic Games didn't even know what the fuck they were writing in 2006. They were just making it, and then they started coming up with more shit as they went along. That's how a lot of stories work. But, I mean, he doesn't, even then, the story implications of Rom and who Rom was wasn't known to people, and I guarantee you that Andy Pants doesn't know it either. The story felt like nothing else. The Gears trilogy okay. truly taught game developers everywhere exactly how you do a sequel, and I wish this idea was copied more. If you can't improve on the original game, don't make anything at all. Gears 2 and Gears 3 took the base that Gears 1 had established, and they made it better. They made the story better. They made the set pieces better. They made the mechanics better. Gears 2 and 3... Okay, can we get, like, any thing at all? Because they made the story better. They made the gameplay better. They made the set pieces better. What does better mean? They made the set pieces better how? Are they more grandiose? Is the music playing a bigger role in it? Is it more interactive with you in the environment? Is there anything to it that makes it better? Other than you just saying, it's better, dude. Come on. Like, what the fuck? Yes, it does sound like he asked ChatGPT to write this. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it does. Merely improved Gears 1. This is also why I think Cliffy B walked away from Gears after making Gears 3, because he knew he was not he able to make judgment. it any better. And he was probably right. Most of us fans believe that Gears 3 is the highlight of the series. and it Most of us fans. I thought you didn't play these games until 2023. Come on, man. Pick up some street cred. <laughs> you can't walk around saying most of us fans when you just said you started playing it a year ago. Never got better. It only went down I mean, you from can, there. But come on. But getting back to the story, before I talk about the story of Gears of War, I want to zoom out for a second and talk about the tone of this game and why it works okay. so well together as a complete package. Gears 1 on hardcore difficulty is incredibly hard. Then you look at the characters and you've got these hard-ass, grizzled military guys. Marcus, Dom, Coltrane, they're grunt soldiers who did their job so well they got promoted, but they're still grunts. The when did they get ever, when did they ever get promoted? <laughs> like Marcus gets promoted, but that's because he was there's other story stuff going on, I guess. They're so shallow and bare bones. I mean, yeah, because it's just like the most surface, like I guarantee at this point, I'm starting to think he didn't even play the games. He just read the fucking wiki page. The whole idea of the Gears games is that the camera never zooms out. You are the grunt soldier. You are doing the dirty work. Bureaucrats and politicians will argue kind about of. taxes. You're just here to shoot stuff, take care of business, and chainsaw guys in half. As far as the story beats itself, Gears takes the template from classic war movies like Saving Private Ryan, Fury, and Platoon. Okay. The Please camera elaborate. never pulls out to give you the general's perspective. You've been given your order. You are on a linear mission throughout the whole game to complete an objective. In this way, the Gears games are hyper-masculine, hyper-military games. Rough men talking roughly to one another, okay. making jokes. <laughs> That's a lot of talk about men being rough with one another. <laughs> making fun of each other, but we're still here with a job to do. Now it's all, oh, Cold Train, tell us all about that play again. This is this original footage? Hey, number 83, sign my shirt. And because of this hyper-masculinity that you see in the first three Gears games, I think this is why Gears 4 and 5... By the way, him saying that the game never zooms out in all three of the first Gears games... Gears of War 2, you are the guy. You are talking with the politicians and, <laughs> and taking orders directly from them, if not giving them to said politicians. In Gears of War 3, you save the fucking world because Marcus's dad builds a device that just kills all the locusts. How is that zoomed in? <laughs> I get the argument for Gears 1, right? Sure, 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 sure. Gears of War 3, you save the literal world that's not that's like the least on the ground you can get <laughs> uh omaha and lies or oh yeah he didn't like it because the character designs and stuff which is like i don't know i don't really care one way or the either or the other it's kind of just like a really non-issue it's like totally personal preference i've fumbled so hard for me 
Who the heck is Kate Diaz and why am I supposed to care about her and her mom? Gears 4. So, like, did you play these games? Because, like, the whole point is that her mom is the daughter of the Queen of the Locust. Uh, I'll give you. It's not written very well. And it could have, it had a lot of potential to do something really cool and really interesting. And they just never did anything with it. But, like, why your argument <laughs> your argument is that like Kate Diaz is like you're supposed to care about her and her mom the whole plot of these games is that you're like who the fuck is Dom Santiago and why should I care about his missing wife who the fuck is Marcus Phoenix and why should I care about his dad who's been missing for 10 years you know what do you mean like what is that what the fuck is that supposed to mean are you just saying you don't like it because women? Like, what? <laughs> what is the argument there? 4 and 5 completely lost the brand identity of the Gears games. Gears is about male bonding and brotherhood. Okay. It's about men fighting hard-ass fights and a war against the evil locusts taking over the world. We are the grunts. We are the boots on the ground. It's a game of manliness. No offense to games that focus on female characters, but Gears is a game about men. Moving on to the actual story, you could sum up the story. I don't story think there's anything about Gears that makes it specifically about the male. Like, the fact that they're male doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. But, like, also, Gears War 3, half the cast is female. So, like, that's not true. You don't believe that. Either that or you didn't play Gears 3. <laughs> or you're lying, which either of those two things could be true. I could see that. For both of those. Uh, but, like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does sound kind of gay. He is talking about men quite a lot. Quite a lot more than me and Ben even talk about men. And normally, he's sucking me off when we do that. So it's, like, it's kind of insane that he, like, focuses on, like, the hyper-masculine part of things. It just... It reads like somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because, honestly, he probably doesn't know... Oh, shit. I lost my spot. Hold on. Where were we? Something about men kissing each other. Here's the Dutch thing. That everything we're doing just makes us a cog hit the character you thought you were as containers out the locust horde. Um... Gears 4 and 5 completing hard-ass fights and a okay, war against go. the evil locust taking over the world. We are the grunts. We are the boots on the ground. But Gear Gears 1 out the locust says. Marcus Phoenix and his allies are on hold a on, mission. Hold on, hold on. But Gears is a game about men. Moving on to the actual story, you could sum up the story of Gears 1 in a few sentences. Marcus so the story <laughs> is genre-defining. It is one of the pillars of the game that makes it great, but you can sum it up in a few sentences. Thinks they're zombies? What? No. No. <laughs> but also saying that the story is really complex and saying you don't know anything about the story, or that the, the story can be summed up in a few sentences, is kind of funny. Guess Phoenix and his allies are on a mission to get a device that will take out the Locust Horde. We fumble mm -hmm. when we first get the device, but get a better version of the device later on and wipe out the Locust. Okay, so that's not. Were you paying attention? You played. You said you played this a year ago. Did you already forget that like, the whole point is that the device doesn't work, and they go get like, suspiciously intact files from his like dad's house. That's like the whole point. Come on. Boom. End of Gears One. Gears Two and Three, as all good sequels do, significantly expand the range of the story. Possible spoilers ahead, by the way. In Gears okay. 2, the game does emotional damage to you. Dom is your war buddy throughout the first game. In the second game, he talks about how much he misses his wife Maria and wants to see her. We finally get underground to her, and she's inside one of those containers, being drained of her life by the locusts. Okay. He kisses her just as her skull fades away, and she's zombified right in front of us. Even now, 15 years later, this scene zombie. hits hard. There's also a scene later on where Ty, the dude with tattoos all over him, commits suicide when he realizes he's being turned into a locust. So that's also not true. How much... 
<laughs> what? Did you? I don't think you played Gears of War. I can't think of two. any other game in 2010 that had suicide or such heavy. Any other game in 2010? It came out in 2008, brother. Um, but like any other game that had suicide or heavy topics? Didn't God of War three end with Kratos like stabbing himself? Like it's not like suicide is like such a taboo thing. <laughs> He said Maria was being zombified, which if that's what he thinks the locust is, is that they make people into zombies and therefore they become low. I, I don't know. He should have said lobotomized. It could just be a really, really bad use of vocabulary. But if he thinks they are actually zombies, that's kind of stupid themes. Moving on to Gears 3, the spot that hit me the hardest in that game is of course the death of Dominique Santiago. He's been with you for three games at this point and to kill off a character you thought you were going to get to the finish line with is absolute emotional damage. The reason I believe the Gears trilogy is so celebrated So like, this goes into my like speculation of whether or not he's actually played the games as he's talking about the story. He kind of gets the story right about Gears 1. It's, like, kind of flubbed, but it's not incorrect, you know? Like, the details are off, but, like, he's not wrong. And then Gears 2 and Gears 3, the only things he mentions about the story is Maria dying and Dom dying. Which... You don't know anything else about the stories of these two games? You're not going to talk about how the whole plot of Gears 2 is that they're sinking cities with a giant worm. And then you got to, like, sink Jacinto because the locusts are also trying to do it. So you're going to do it before them and flood it with seawater. And how the plot of Gears 3 is that the planet is dying to an actual zombie virus um, made from their oil. And then they literally have to save the world. By the way, small on-the-ground boots soldiers. Uh, but, like... Did we just, like, forget? Or does it not matter? Or have you not played these games and you only know Gears of War, like, serendipitously through, you know, exposure to it being on the internet? Game Assist play, played the games? I mean, yeah, that video wasn't, like, bad. Like, they knew what they were talking about, kind of. They just skewed it in a way to, like, have a specific talking point. This is just, like... All the information here you could get by, like, going to the Gears of War Discord, going to the lore channel, and being like, what is the story of Gears of War? And, like, listening to one of the people in there tell you what the story is. And the fourth and fifth games are such mixed bags is because plot-wise, the first three games followed the formula of classic buddy war movies like Saving mm -hmm. Private Ryan. Yeah. Why this is such what a is that <laughs> What is that formula? Can you tell me what that formula is other than just saying it's like... <laughs> saving private ryan what does that even mean has the media literacy of deaf and blind toddlers <laughs> terrain damage yeah i don't even think it's like we a media literacy thing he just didn't play the games that is that feels more and more obvious the more we get into this plot for a movie and a timeless plot for a game is because we don't actually want the camera to pull out we don't actually want, we don't want to the that. camera. The camera literally pulls out at the end of Gears of War 3, and you see that we've saved the entire world. But everything we're doing just makes us a cog hit in a machine. When you're with your platoon, you have everything you want. Friendship, community, okay. purpose. The orders that come down from your commander don't really matter. This is a basic principle of every army and how it works. The same applies... So, Gears of War 3 doesn't even follow you that formula, because they're not even a military at the beginning of Gears of War 3. Gears of War 2, the entire plot is them getting orders from their commanders and following that out. He made a shitty joke. I didn't even catch the joke. That's how bad it was. As to I didn't know he was reading the joke. Games, if they actually want to be realistic and good war stories, the orders coming down from above don't matter. It's our brother next to us that matters. Unfortunately, again, Gears 4 doesn't seem to understand any of that. Instead of Gears being about brotherhood, duty, and a common purpose to your fellow man, Gears 4 is about women, motherhood, and being a deserter. It also <laughs> plays the... I guess. I don't know how it's about motherhood or women. Being a deserter, kind of. It's like you got JD's whole thing of dealing about being out of the cog and coming back. Again, he's using IGN footage, so I don't think he's actually played the game. I think he's just seen a woman on the front of the cover and assumed that to be the case. Uh, 
<laughs> the worst of any of the Gears games so far, but I'll get into that later. Now, I'm no sexist, and I'm totally fine with women uh -huh. being in the Gears games, but when the original trilogy were such male-focused, hyper -ma But, like, Gears of War 3, which you just said was really, really good, that scene with Dom dying, half of the cast in that scene are women. Come on, dude. I'm not even angry anymore. I'm just disappointed. Come on. I mean, I know you didn't play the game, and that's why you're not bringing it up, but come on. Masculine games about brotherhood and duty, and then you turn that game on its head. And do you have any examples? I mean, I know you didn't play the game, so you don't, but do you have any examples of it being about brotherhood? Outside of the fact that everyone on the internet said that Gears of War is a game about brotherhood, can you tell me? This is my biggest complaint with Gears 1 and 2, is that Marcus and Dom aren't brothers. Like, they like aren't that close. They never talk about anything. They don't have any character relationships with one another. In Gears of War 2... Dom has to beg Marcus to go with him to look for his dying wife. Like, they're not that close. It's not until uh, Gears of War 3 that they, like, start to become closer. And even then, Marcus doesn't really give a shit about anyone. Dom is the one being sympathetic with everyone. I guess you could say it's part of Marcus's character arc or whatever. But they don't even show it, like, unconditionally. Like, you look at, like, Kratos in God of War Ragnarok, you can see that he cares about his friends and Atreus, even though he's not saying, he never once says, oh, I care about Atreus, because you can see it in his actions and the way he does things. Gears of War literally doesn't have anything. The tagline is literally brothers to the end. Well, yeah, it's like the games, like, the games even play that angle, but, like, there's nothing in the narrative or the script or anything that indicates that to be the case. Like, it's not reinforced at all. Dom comforts Sam. Yeah, Dom is there for everyone. He's not really in the first two games. They don't really have a relationship at all. Uh, <laughs> but, like, it's, it's not like brotherhood, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't feel that way. But, you know, everyone says it is, and he hasn't played the games, but he knows that's what he's supposed to say, so that's what he's going to say. Get about a mother and a daughter. Well, it's easy to see why Gears 4 was such a failure critically not, and commercially. Really. If they wanted to tell the story of Kate Diaz, I think it should have been a spinoff game, kind of like Uncharted Lost Legacy. Gears is about Marcus Phoenix the same way Uncharted is about Nathan Drake. Modern films and media keep doing this to our characters, and I wonder when they will learn that we don't want beloved characters changed. If you want to introduce a new character, create a new series. It's similar to the movie She-Hulk that recently came out. The movie? Nobody Come on, wanted this TV movie, show. nobody asked for this movie, and no surprise, it bombed. Well, what about Gears 5? Unfortunately, it fell suspect to all the same problems of Gears 4. It's overly complicated, it gets away from the hyper-masculine... Okay. Hi, new coverless ASMR. <laughs> That's a long name. Welcome to the stream. We're <laughs> making fun of Andy Pants. Um, Marcus and Dom are not Finn and Jake. Not even close, dude. Not even, even though John DiMaggio is in both. Not even close. <laughs> but like, come on. Gears 5, overly complicated plot. The plot of Gears 5 is Kate is related to the Locust and she doesn't want to be. And then they fight swarm that's the entire plot it, it the plot is not any more complicated than gears one and two way too easy i mean i guess i don't think you've played any of these games so i don't think that's the case i don't think you you even believe that gears five is i mean it's just as hard as gears one is especially when you play it on it's easier in that like the abilities and stuff make it easier to cheese but like there's more um, complex enemy varieties that make it harder by virtue of them existing um, about women, not men. I mean, I guess like half of the story of Gears 5 is about JD and Dell and their relationship and everything. I guess you could say it's about women, but the only female character is Kate and her relationship with all of her male friends. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you just see a woman on the front cover and you assume that it's like a story about femininity or feminism or some shit. But you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about because I guarantee you, you haven't played these goddamn games. <sighs> so disappointing. Boots on the ground story about men of the first three Gears game. And it becomes a game about deserting the military, being a coward sisterhood about women and starring women 
about the, sisterhood. There's not even multiple female characters for it to be about sisterhood. What do you mean it's about sisterhood? <laughs> what? <laughs> the only female character in those games is Kate. And I guess her mom, but her mom isn't even in Gears of War 4. Uh, and then, like, Lizzie who dies about five minutes after you meeting her and doesn't even have a line of dialogue that she shares with Kate. I'm trying to think, actually. I don't think there's a single line of dialogue Kate has with another female character outside of her own mom. It just doesn't exist. It's not even close to being about sisterhood. Not even remotely close. It's just, you're just straight up... You see women and you're importing this feminism bullshit on top of it. When you haven't even played the game, the I can tell because you're still using IGN Gears footage. Five involves Kate going head to head with Jin. Uh, okay, she does talk to Jin. That's another female character that she talks to, but that's not sisterhood because they're just arguing. <laughs> the head of the cog. Is there a problem, people? No problem at all, Mrs. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a chick in it. Make her gay. I found the story of Gears 5 so boring that I barely made it to the end of So, like, it's a really weird thing here, because I don't really like the story of Gears 5 either. But what is the complaint there? That Kate yells at the president, first minister? Because I hate to break it to you, but the very first line of dialogue Marcus has with the leadership, Hoffman, in Gears 1, is yelling at him. <laughs> like, like, not yelling, yelling, but like he's like, I'm not doing this for you. In Gears of War 2, he's constantly bitching about Hoffman and Prescott. In Gears of War 3, the very first thing he does is yell in Prescott's face. Like, what is the, the argument? Is it that they're two women talking to each other on screen? Because should every time that Anya and Sam interact in Gears 3 make that a bad game? Is that a game about sisterhood? Are you just coming up with bullshit out of your ass? Is the complaint that the characters are, like, arguing with the president? Because Marcus does that all the fucking time. So it's like, it's not... It's not an actual argument. You're just saying bullshit. Of the game. In addition to the story of Gears 4 and 5 being vastly inferior to the trilogy, the gameplay itself... And he won't, you'll see that like he doesn't even talk about what the story is. He says it's about sisterhood, which, as we just talked about, Kate doesn't talk to another female character outside of Jin, who she's arguing with. And he won't say anything else about the story because he hasn't played them. He doesn't know what the story is. He wanted to go save his father, still bit him in the ass. Yeah. Marcus is a whiny bitch in the in the games. He's just not female, so it doesn't come off that way. At least to him. Is inferior as well. If you check out the clip on screen, I'm playing hardcore difficulty in Holy Gears shit. of War 1. Footage from the Gears. combat is incredibly tense and incredibly hard. Okay. If you stick your head out for more than a few seconds, the cog in the middle of the screen goes completely red. <sighs> Taking any fire at all or moving okay. at a bad time in Gears 1 means instant death with nobody to pick you up. So how does the difficulty of Gears 4 compare? Well, it's significantly easier. In Gears 4 on hardcore mode, there's a segment where you are fighting four boomers at once. So, the four boomers, you fight them with the Hammer of Dawn. What are you talking about? You're not fighting four boomers at once. You're fighting in a set piece. I immediately beat this part on my first try. Meanwhile, in Gears 1, the hardest part of the game had two okay. boomers. I think and you're I must just have bad died at the game, 50 bro. times at this part on hardcore mode. By the way, in Gears 4, it gives you a Hammer of Dawn. Of course you beat the four. If you lost to the four boomers with the Hammer of Dawn, dude, I would laugh so hard. What do you mean you beat the four boomers on hardcore with the Hammer of Dawn? Of course you did. It's literally an insta-kill gun. If you died, it would be fucking laughable. It's, I think you're just, <laughs> first of all, I don't think you played these games, at least not to like, you haven't like played them all. You might've played the prologue to Gears 4, I guess. I'm sure. Maybe. You stood still when you meet the boomers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, it took you 50 tries to beat two boomers. Like they're not that difficult. They tell you when they're going to shoot and they shoot in a straight fucking line. You can dodge them with your brain turned off. They tell you exactly when, where, and how they're going to attack. 
you've used the sound effect three times so far. They go boom, and then they shoot you. They're not that complex of an enemy to go against. I think you're just bad at these games, what little of them you have played. Did you notice how in Gears 1 I had to stay in cover basically Is this the all only clip you have? You only recorded that? I said, I said at least record 10 seconds to show us what you're talking about. But, like, you have the singular 10-second clip. The time. Other also, how come the Gears 4 one was on PC and then Gears were back to console controls? I, and now I'm just super nitpicking now. But, like, come on. <laughs> Otherwise, I would get immediately melted. Where's the you clip know, of you fighting the boomers for be. 50 times? Well, in Gears 4 Hardcore mode, I can just kind of wander around. Nobody's attacking me. No danger. So the hardest difficulty in the Gears trilogy the is insane, and let's just say it's uh, insane. In Gears 4 and 5, they added an additional difficulty even harder than insane called Inconceivable. But guys, I gotta be honest, Inconceivable in Gears 4 doesn't even come close to Insane in Gears 1. Make that make sense for me. In Gears... You did not play Gears War 4 on Inconceivable. I, I guarantee you did not. As the intelligence level of Boomer. Yeah, he's playing at the same level that they are. Uh, single clip the whole time about Gears 4. Yeah. You did not play Gears 4 on Inconceivable. I don't even think you played Gears 1 on Insane. <laughs> Gears 1, I still found the enemies to be smarter, to be constantly outwitting me, whereas in Gears They're 4 and 5 on... Inc you were getting outwitted by AI from 2006? Be fucking for real. Because that's either... <laughs> it either isn't the the compliment to the game you think it is, <laughs> or it's just not true. <laughs> conceivable it was kind of like they made the enemy spongier and they could take more bullets but they weren't really smarter and the ai wasn't really more advanced but guys this goes back to what i was it's not even him playing the game he's watching a youtube video <laughs> you can see him really smarter in the five ai seconds wasn't really ahead, more advanced. right there he's not but even guys, playing this the goes game back to what i was saying even him. that the original it's not even him playing Gears of War 4. <laughs> he just used this clip 10 seconds ago to be like, look, I'm standing here on insane and I'm not dying. And then he shows us <laughs> a few seconds later that he's just screen recording a YouTube video <laughs> and using that as his evidence. Like, come on. Like, what's the alternative? You believe me to think that you did record Gears 4, you uploaded it to YouTube, and then you screen recorded that footage on YouTube to use in your other YouTube video? You, this is like, you could have at least cut that out so I wouldn't have known. Come on. <laughs> Gears trilogy are the hardest Gears games. They're much okay. harder, and they have more didn't of a play hardcore Gears War feel 2 and 3, than Gears 4 if and you 5. Even Gears, War Gears 4 and 5 are soft games. They're easy to beat. They you were didn't easy play to games. get through. And they're just, they don't represent nearly the challenge of the original three Gears games. So, guys, just to begin to wrap this video up, I am not even close to the world's biggest... I like how he had to, like, shove all the criticisms about Gears 4 and 5 in, like, the last two minutes because he didn't play these games, and so he doesn't know how to talk about them because he doesn't know anything about them uh and the criticism is basically they're bad with no elaboration whatsoever hung on across the paper on his chest reading don't be this guy <laughs> yeah years fan and i have only recently started playing this series but what i do know is it's incredibly sad for me to see a beloved trilogy of games get watered down get softened get feminized get sanitized and turned into the garbage that we Again, have what in does Gears 4 and Gears even 5. In this context. And no offense to you if you do like Gears 4 and 5, I just feel like they do not represent the core brand identity that we see in the Now original. here's a part where I will reluctantly agree with Andy Pants. Gears 4 and 5 do not really carry the same tone, art style, or anything over from Gears, you know, 1 and 2, especially. Gears 3, it's a bit more... Um, and Gears Judgment, it's a bit more in line with those than it is Gears 1 and 2. But, I don't know. I mean, it's just bad writing. It's not, like, feminized or anything. Like, there's nothing more, you know, it's not substantially worse in any way than Gears, the the first few games were. What does this even mean? 
original Gears trilogy. It doesn't make any fucking sense. As far as I'm concerned, Gears of War 1, 2, and 3 are the only real Gears games. Okay. And I hope that Microsoft returns to this original formula. Why don't you talk about Returns judgment? to the masculine feel, to the brotherhood feel, returns to the boots on the ground, to okay. the true realistic military style game that these You know why this sounds like AI is because he's used like the same phrases like 70 times. And if you've used, um, he won't, yeah, he won't. If you, like, if you've used ChatGPT, you'll notice very quickly that, like, it just repeats the same stuff over and over again. Because ChatGPT talks like it knows what it's talking about, even though it doesn't. And that's very much the same as what's happening here with Andy Pants, where he's talking about it like he knows what he's talking about. But it's very clear that he doesn't have any clue what he's talking about. I don't even think he's played Gears 4 and 5, let alone 2 and 3, let alone Gears 1. I don't even know if he's played it. Like, there is nothing indicative to me here that he's played Gears War 1 that he couldn't have just gotten by, like, reading a bare-bones description of the game on Wiki. Gears fans are willing to talk about judgment. People don't hate judgment. Um, people hate, like, the fact that it's not Gears War 3.5. Um, it took a lot of... Like, it's not a bad game. It's a bad Gears of War game. It's not a bad game. You know, it's like Halo 4, right? Like, if you've never played a Gears of War game, Judgment is fine. If you've played Gears of War 3, Judgment is absolute dog trash. <laughs> Three games were. And I but I don't think he knows what Judgment the fact is. That Gears 4 and 5 are about motherhood instead of brotherhood. There's nothing about motherhood in these games. Like, I guess there's a mother character. But does that mean Gears 3 is about fatherhood? Because... Marcus has a dad. We can say he's played a YouTube video. <laughs> he's played a YouTube video of the Gears games. That is true. <laughs> but if these games were still fun and difficult, but the difficulty was toned down as well to just make these games completely you didn't play these games to me. Please don't so tell in me about the difficulty I think not Microsoft being giving the Gears games to the Coalition. It's similar to what they did by giving Halo to 343i. These have become bad games, I. and they've gotten away from the core identity of what made these games good. And I hope they find a new studio, whether it means bringing back in Cliffy B or whatever they want to do. I hope they get no. back to the core of what made these games good, because this ain't it. All right, I'm out of here. Okay, I don't. I didn't see anything that told me anything about how it's worse. You just said it's worse. Trust me, bro. Damn, 140 years? Maybe I should start grifting Gears War fans. Hold on. Ty Kaliso wasn't turned into a locust. He was being tortured by Scourge to the point of intang irreparable trauma. And what happens before we find Maria living the longer-lasting effects of that same torture? Just a correction. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> uh, this is two months after the video came out. He's still going through these comments. Um... Kate's whole thing, Gears 5, is identity? Kind of. It's like her identity as, like, a part of the Locust. Um, I'm also a bit confused about his comments about 4 and 5 being feminine, about being motherhood and mother-daughter relationship, when the relationship between Reyna and Kate is blatantly ignored, and Kate shuts it off every time she's asked about it. I'm definitely not a fan of both games, but I think he was being kind of salty about Kate being a main character, which is still awful dull, but doesn't make the game feminine at all. He says, you guys are correct about Ty. I think we agree Kate is shit. So he doesn't even address the, <laughs> the criticism that <laughs> Kate is, like, feminized in some way. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet baby ink. Uh, God of War Ragnarok is woke, guys. Insane is so hard. <laughs> God. He, it's, it's, like, painfully obviously to me. Painfully obvious to me that, like, this is a guy masquerading as someone who's played Gears of War. That's that's the exact vibes that I'm giving getting from this. Uh, God, it took us an hour to get through that.